Welcome to another post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Uh, today is Saturday, May 14th, 2022. Last night, the Indiana Hoosiers had a thrilling comeback, uh, scoring six runs in the eighth inning to defeat the Minnesota Golden Gophers by a score of 8-6. to six. Uh, After the game, the media caught up with head coach Jeff Mercer, center fielder Bobby Wayland, and third baseman Josh Pine. Coach, what do you think about uh, Josh Pine? You know, he had the walk-off against Illinois, the big hit to give you guys the lead yeah. this year. Just what does it say about him as, as just a freshman coming in with coming up with those big clutch hits for you guys? I mean, that cat's got a slow heartbeat. I know I've said it a bunch, but I mean, he's been injured for six weeks. You know, I try to give him a day here and there, a blow, and uh, just to keep coming. I mean, it's just abnormal. I told the guys it's not normal for, for a team to be like this. It's not normal for their character and their DNA to be that tough. And, and what Josh is doing is, is not normal. And uh, I just, there's, there's not enough, I think superlatives is the correct word there. There's not enough adjective to describe, you know, how, how uh, incredible of a player he is. Uh, it's just, his, it's his DNA. He's just tough. He doesn't get sped up. He just competes. He's, he is as good as I've ever seen as a freshman of being able to let go of whatever's happened in the past and, and just be on that pitch on offense or on defense or, or anything. He just, um, he is so good at staying in that moment on that pitch and moving on. Um, and and uh, I'm just, like I say all the time, I'm just glad he's, I'm glad he's a Hoosier because, man, he is a, he is a heck of a player. Just incredible. Matthew Ellis, um, with yeah. the, the, they, they put in a lefty specifically to go yes. up against him, yes. which has been a, a concern for Ellis in yes. the past. So, yeah. uh, what what did he? What did you tell him? What did he yeah. do to, to, to gain success in that at bat? Well, you know, actually, I, I gave him the player of the game just for that moment because they came to that with the lefty and he had walked twice, but he came with the lefty there. And um, you know, I was talking to him, and and, and honestly, you know, Philip Glasser is the one that made a really really good comment to him. He said, "Hey, remember, the one that you're going to hit, the slider you're going to hit, is going to start at your front hip, and make sure it starts at your front hip." And, and that's what he did there. You know, got a pitch that starts up and in, and that's a tough transition for, for lefties, obviously, and it's a, something that he hasn't been the best at, but you just have to keep going and keep working. Uh, but for him, he just, he works so hard. He's in there on the spin ball. He's in there on, on crossfire, uh, close side, trying to work on it, trying to improve on it. Uh, but it, it really was, was just a, 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 a determination to stay in the middle of the field versus that lefty. And, and Zach Rutherford did a great job of having that kid on the scouting report, knowing he, I think he was like 40, 42, 45 percent sliders, especially with guys in scoring position. He was going to throw it there to Ellis, and he worked back in the count and got it, and, and he hits the ball as hard as anybody in the country. So um, it, it just, again, you talk about a slow hard beat, talk about determination and toughness to, to step into that moment when it's not your strength and to, and to find a way to compete your way through it. Just to, in essence, really, honestly, just to compete until so you get a pitch you can handle, and then when you when you get it, to, to be able to just put a good swing on it, not try to do too much. You know, it, it'd be really easy for that guy who has such great raw power to pull off that ball and try to launch it. And for him just to stay, you know, through the middle of the field on the line, it was a really mature, uh, advanced up bat for him. It was great to see from him the, the growth and maturity in that moment. I was very proud of him. I wanted to ask you about one of the most famous games in IU history with the walk-off against Valparaiso in 2013 on the Chad Clark home run. I know you weren't here, but yeah. I kept thinking as you rallied in the eighth, there's shades of that game, there's shades of that yeah. game where a yeah. team that wasn't playing well came from nowhere all of a sudden to win yeah. the game, and then they yeah. used that to yeah. propel themselves to the regional and the College World Series. Obviously, the stakes here weren't quite as high, but sure. can you talk about, you know, if basically if you can use – the comeback and and if you saw any comparisons that game and also yeah. if you could you, you can use the comeback to propel you the rest of the weekend. Yeah, well at the, at the time I was a Horizon League guy, you know, I was that played and was coaching the Horizon League and obviously I was a Hoosier at heart. So, you know, I was a little bit torn. I was I was more much more thrilled to see the Hoosiers win that game, but um, being in the Horizon League, I felt bad for Valpo at the time. But you know, it's something that we've done all year, and it's in I guess it keeps saying in our DNA, but it really is. If you look at the course of the season, how many times have we come back and come back and come back and and that's just a statement to them. It's not something you know. I wish I could take credit for that. There's there's no there's no drill for that. There's no uh, speech you give a, a, a bunch of kids to, to fight like crazy all the way through. And and you're right. It's a different situation in that moment. But to these kids in this moment, they're fighting for their lives. And so in essence, it is the same, right? It is the same when you're fighting for your life every day for the last month, and to continue to come through like that. I I do understand the comparison there. Uh, and, and, and for them to continue to do that, it's just a statement on their character and their toughness. But they've been doing it all year. That's why I've been saying all along how much I enjoy and I appreciate this team because they just refuse to quit and refuse to die. And when you do that, you never know what will happen. If you just use all 27 outs 
and don't cash in your chips after four or five innings, it's not going your way, then you have a chance to do something like that. And, and, and obviously, you know, what, what they did here at Indiana in the past was incredible, and it was built on toughness, and it was built on work ethic, and it was built on the ability to compete. And that's what we want to do as well. We want to have the same kind of program and the, the same the same heart and the same pride, you know, with Indiana across our chest, and, and that's what these boys are doing. When you think about some of the ups and downs that the bullpen has gone through this year, just how big is it to have a night like tonight where you get four separate performances for four right. scoreless innings right. um, to keep you guys in the game? It was huge, and and that's why you put guys in those positions earlier in the year. You keep running them out there, and you keep running them out there, and you keep running them out there, and you keep coaching them. You know what a what a testament to, to Coach Gallant and his continued work with those guys. All those guys at one point or another have struggled. Um, to watch Reese Sharp knuckle down in moments like that are incredible. Incredible growth from the beginning of the year to right now where he's at. And, and he and, and Coach Gallant and the rest of those pitchers and Denton Segerman, they've worked so hard to continue to work and improve and to have the bullpen come in and, and close the door was incredible because they had guys on base. They had Clutter who turned double play. You know, we made plays. How about Gavin Goforth on the heady play with the guy on second base, the fly ball, guy steps off and tags him. He didn't make that play single. All of a sudden, it's a different ball game, right? And so those, those moments, all of them individually make up the entirety of the game. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's huge for the bullpen to come through for us uh, in the moment. And that's what they've done. You look at the last look at the last three or four weeks, and those guys have done that. They've grown up, they've developed, they've improved, and they've given us innings when we had to have them. And tonight was no different. And, and, and honestly, uh, it, it, it's it's only gotten better as they've gone. So very proud of them. Bobby Leland is an everyday starter. He comes up there big in that moment. Um, yeah. Things turned into an everyday starter. What yeah. was sort of the progression that you saw in the offseason and your reaction to him coming up in the clutch? Well, you know, Bobby had to make some some swing adjustments. And, and he was the first one to, 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 to say that. And, you know, you, you talk about the you talk about the drill work and the drill work that we do. You know, the, the drill work only works if the if the guy working it works, right? And and he invested into it and he believes in it. Bobby's a tactician, he's a professional. And whether he has a good day or a bad day, he's in there working every day, he's asking questions. You know, he, he asked me when we got back, was it Sunday night? He asked me to come in Monday morning and I did, I had nothing to do with today. Just it's a statement on him, you know, right away, hey, can we get back to work? Hey, I'm feeling this. And he comes up to me after the game and or during the middle of the game after the base hit. He said, hey, X, Y, and Z about his swing. I need to do this. I made the adjustment in the moment, and I felt better because of it. And when you're that invested and you're smart and you've worked that hard, you're able to adjust throughout the course of the game. And so, you know, yeah, Bobby was an everyday guy last year, but your program is based on player development, and your program is full of young men like Bobby who just are, are completely invested into growing and learning and improving, then they'll find a way. They'll find a way, and Bobby's a great example of it. Couldn't be more proud of a, of a young man in, in his growth over the last year. And then his, I mean, he's the engine. In many ways, Bobby's the engine. He's one of the one of the true leaders of the program. And so when, in those moments, you trust him to come up and have a good at bat. Um, he's, he's carried us in so many different ways, both emotionally and physically on the field. And that was another big moment for Bobby and very proud of him. Looks like two more. Can you talk about Jack Perkins night? He had three good innings, but then twice, he, he as soon as he got in trouble, he lost the strike zone and couldn't get Get, get it back, it seems yeah. like. What what was what did you think of his performance tonight and why that happened? Well, I mean, there's been there's been uh, many a times where Jack single-handedly carried us, right? There's been many different moments where Jack executes big pitches and, and pitches around an air, pitches around, you know, us not making the play. Today just was our day to go there and, and be there for Jack, right? So he missed, uh, tried to get a fastball in to, I think it was Sweeney hit the homer, tried to get a fastball in, left it down and away in his hot zone, and the guy hits one out of here. You know, we get two quick outs, um, and, and a guy squeaks a single in the six hole, and, and they get a couple of walks in by pitch and whatnot, and they, and they and they score the runs. But not every night Jack's going to be able to go 120 pitches and, and carry the team on his back. But that's a great thing about having a bunch of other dudes here that are able to do that. And that's a great thing to your question about the bullpen, able to step up. I mean, Jack's a great pitcher and a great player and been a terrific leader for us. And So tonight wasn't his night. All right, tonight was you know Ryan Kraft and Reese Sharp and those guys' night, and it was – you know, those all, that offensive run late, it was their night. So, love Jack. He'll, he'll be back on it next week, back on the horse, ready to go. And and uh, doesn't shake my confidence in him one bit. He's a great player and, and a great Hoosier. How's Philip coming along uh, after his at-bats today? I haven't talked to him afterwards, um, but he was a super confident kid. And so he was telling me you know, how, how big the ball looked and how good he was feeling. And so it sounded like his normal self today. So we see how he feels tomorrow, if he's able to play defense or not. Uh, Evan Goforth has stepped in and played like a you know like a professional so i'm hopeful he's able to do it but if not um, 
then we'll, we'll keep we'll go, trying to keep going with the DH role. Um, but but if you know Philip at all, nothing would surprise you. He'll find his way out there, I'd imagine. Probably immediately get the first base and you know, explode with happiness. What we'll, we'll sort of go through your mind? I mean, there's one thing that I that goes through my head every time I step on the field. And it's when at any cost. And my day didn't start the way I wanted it, but I got my chance to make an impact on the game, and I made it. So all of my emotions just came out. How was it feeling when you guys were down, you know, six to two, and you're trying to think about, you know, how how do you come back? What, what was going through your head at that at that point? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, but we've been doing it all year. I mean, we just put together at bats, no matter if we're down ten or up ten. We just put together at bats, and eventually we're going to break through. And that's all we did tonight. We just stuck to what we do best, and finally broke through in the eighth inning. Did anything change about the way that you were trying to approach their pitchers um, later in the game, or was it more just that you were getting um, pitches that you know were in your zone to hit? Uh, I mean, no, my approach stayed the same. I just wasn't as successful in the beginning of the game, but luckily I stuck with that same approach and, and I was successful in my last at-bat. Um, you had the game-tying single. How important, was, do you feel that was the most, one of the most important hits of your career to get that, uh, given the stakes of trying to make the big ten turn? I would say up to, this, up to this day, that's the biggest hit of my college career for sure. Was there anything you felt was unusual about the way Minnesota was pitching you guys today? Uh, they were just they were just throwing a lot of breaking balls, which is kind of something that we're used to, and we struggled early, and then we got back to our approach. I think we we're all losing our approach a little bit, and then finally got back to it and started swinging the strikes, taking balls, and then broke through. How impressive have you been with you know the the amount of freshmen on this lineup when you think of Josh Carter, um, Brock too, that have been able to come up in in huge moments like that. Yeah, I mean, I've been in college for three years, and I have never seen a freshman class work the way this freshman class works and, and perform the way that they perform. I mean, they go hand in hand, but just the way that they're able to work every single day and then come out here and act like seniors on the field, it's incredible. Josh, Carter, Brock, Evan stepping in, Max stepping in. I mean, they all come ready to play. And it's, I mean, it's huge for us upperclassmen just to know that we can trust the freshman class. How much confidence do you think this win gives you guys now going into the rest of the series knowing that you got this one when it you know look, looking like you guys might drop the first game just how much does this propel you guys just for the rest of the series yeah i mean it helps now we have the opportunity to win the series tomorrow and that's what we come to do every single weekend so it's just a day earlier now so we're coming tomorrow to win the series and then we'll worry about sunday when it comes josh so uh you had the uh the walk-off hit against uh illinois big hit uh, again tonight to give you guys the lead you just take us through like your mentality at the plate when you know it's a big pressure pack situation like that you know what are you doing to you know, keep yourself focused um, just at the plate yeah you know I, I go up there sticking my approach like I always do I found myself actually in an 0-2 count tonight so you know I just stepped out of the box and took a breather told myself you know you can do this like stick to your approach stick to what the coaches teach and you know I, I fought off a couple pitches I think it was a 2-2 count and you know I just got a pitch that I like I could hit up the middle just not doing too much you know Base hit, score two. I knew that with Bobby on second, so I really just stuck to my approach. I'm going to ask you the same thing. I actually asked Bobby if it, I asked him if it was the biggest hit of his college career, given the stakes of getting into the Big Ten tournament, needing this game. Do you feel like the go-ahead hit you had was the biggest hit of your career, just like Bobby's was the biggest of his career at the time? I would, I would say yes. I, I would say yes. That probably was right there. That hits mine. That's that's. that's You've come up big multiple times this season, specifically with two outs. Um, so is there a different mental approach that you're thinking about when you're in a situation in which it is two outs um, and, you know, it's, you know, it's you get a hit or the inning's over? Yeah, yeah, you know, I really don't like being the last out of the inning. And, and we had a couple times, you know, throughout the season at Michigan, you know, where a two-out double sparked like Ellis. I mean, Ellis didn't have two outs, but his, his double was sparked, you know, our inning, this inning. And so... You know, there's a lot that can happen with two outs. So going up there, just trying to drive the ball the other way up the middle, you know, get on base and, and trust the guys behind me. You know, we got a great group of guys. Uh, we're really good at the plate. And so just getting on base, getting in scoring position and trusting the guy behind me to do the job. I guess what are your conversations like with your teammates in the dugout when you're trailing six to two, um, you know, to, to try to start building that comeback, you know, run by run? 
you know, it's it's easy, especially you know, on a three and a half hour, four hour game, it's easy to become like unfocused and you know just start talking about whatever. But you know, we all we're there for each other. We hold each other accountable. It's to stay focused. We got a job to do. You know, the pitching staffs out there, you know, throwing well. We gotta we gotta put up some lines behind them. You know, so it's stay focused, do our jobs, and if everyone does their job, then you know, we'll come out on top. Anything else? A couple guys in front of you came up with uh, some big hits and then you called them. Uh, what was sort of the emotion unraveling when you saw them come up with the big hits and then getting on base? You know, it, it's awesome. It's, it's a team effort and that shows it right there. You know, there's, like I said, Ellis started that inning pretty much and you know, he, he batted like six or seven tonight and I'm, I'm three hole. And so there's just a chain of chain reaction right there that happens and it's awesome. It's off, It's awesome when that happens. That was a six run inning and you know, it takes everybody. Anything else? I got, I got one. Yep. Um, so Coach Mercer has talked about how, you know, throughout the, off, uh, throughout the off season you were hurt for a while and didn't necessarily have a full off season to like prepare for the season, I guess. Did you expect yourself or could you ever have envisioned yourself being in the situation where, you know, you're batting third and coming up with these huge clutch hits, you know, in your freshman season? Uh, if I'm being honest with you, not really. Um, if we're looking back, you know, November, December, I, I would have said no. Um, but you know, there, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And we had our ex meeting and I was told what I needed to do and I did it to the best of my ability. And you know, it just worked out. Um, just when you buy into something, something valuable like the coaches are teaching, you know, it, it works. And so it's all when the team buys in and we all have, it shows. When the team buys in, I mean, we're really, really good. That concludes this post game media edition. Uh, the Indiana Hoosiers are back in action at noon today. Uh, we'll be facing off again against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The Hoosiers are currently 9 and 10 in the Big Ten. Uh, a win would get them both the series and up to 500 in league play. We will see you at the BART.